Hello and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. And the topic I've chosen for today is routine urine tests, which are useless and harmful. So um, I'll just start at the beginning. Yet another routine test performed by doctors at regular visits has been determined to be both useless and potentially harmful, and that's urinalysis. The test is an equally bad idea for younger people and older people, particularly a bad idea for people who don't have symptoms such as frequent urination, blood in the urine, fever, or abdominal cramping or pain. They don't need the test. Older people, including nursing home residents, will have a positive test almost every time because increased bacteria in the urinary tract is a normal uh, function of aging. It's not a disease, it's not pathology, and it doesn't require treatment. The problem is that a significant number of people who are not sick are given antibiotics anyway in response to a positive test. The antibiotics are not warranted and can result in a real illness due to a common side effect of uh, antibiotics, which is destruction of the gut microbiome, which among other things helps to regulate immunity. So just think about it. A healthy person goes for a routine physical or is given routine physicals in a residential facility like a nursing home. Um, and the person has no problems, but is given a drug in response to the test, which actually creates, can create a real problem. Um, this is not, you don't, you're not supposed to get sicker by engaging in healthcare, but that is actually a possibility in our world. Researchers have been recommending, by the way, that doctors stop prescribing antibiotics every time a urinalysis is positive, but studies show that there has been absolutely no reduction in the practice. For example, a study of 2,833 hospitalized medical patients who had a positive urine culture without any symptoms, completely asymptomatic people, uh, showed that 82.7% of them were treated with antibiotics. The study, which uh, took place at 46 hospitals that were participating in the Michigan Hospital Safety Consortium, showed that antibiotic treatment resulted in longer hospital stay for those patients than the ones who did not get antibiotics. So, People who had no symptoms of UTIs or anything like that, routine urinalysis shows a positive test, they get antibiotics and they actually stay in the hospital longer as a result of it. As I mentioned before, people are not supposed to get sicker in the hospital or when engaging in the medical system, but you know, unfortunately it happens every day. The problem is, well, one of the many problems is the predisposition of doctors to wanna to do something about anything they find. And they're likely to find positive results of routine urinalysis according to an accompanying editorial in the same journal. Approximately 5% of young adults have asymptomatic um, bacteriuria at any time, as do 10 to 20% of diabetics, 30% of patients with spinal cord injuries, 50 to 70% of patients using urinary catheters, and 30 to 50% of patients living in long-term facilities. This leads to a lot of harmful prescribing since, as the authors of the editorial note, antibiotics can increase the risk of developing a urinary tract infection, can increase the risk of antibiotic resistance, and increase the risk of C. diff infection, which is notorious, notoriously hard to treat. So again, we're inducing disease when we try to treat not disease. It's just insane. While doctors can't seem to refrain from prescribing drugs to people who aren't sick, so the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force is trying to get doctors to stop ordering the test in the first place. Last month, the task force renewed its recommendations that go all the way back to 1996. That's when the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force started telling doctors, you got to stop this nonsense. Well, my gosh, it's 2019, still going on. Uh, so anyway, the task force renewed its recommendations advising that routine urinalysis offers no benefit in non-pregnant adults and does cause known harms, including harm from unnecessary treatment or antibiotics. The task force noted that there's moderate benefit from testing pregnant women because you sometimes can catch infections early and, and that sort of thing. But, but the pregnant women are not the ones who are receiving most of the urinalysis. Most of, the, most of these tests are being done on not pregnant women. Other groups agree with the task force. The Infectious Diseases Society of America provided even more detailed recommendations against, advising against urinalysis for infants and children healthy non-pregnant women, older community dwelling adults who are functionally impaired, 
older persons living in long-term care facilities, diabetics, kidney transplant patients, solid organ transplant patients, patients with spinal cord injuries, patients using catheters, and plan patients planning to go under, uh, undergo surgery for artificial urine sphincter or penile prosthesis. That's a pretty big group of people who don't qualify. The society advised, again, that pregnant women and patients undergoing endoscopic urologic procedures probably should be tested. That's a very small percentage of the population. The society cited some of the same reasons as the Preventive Services Task Force, including the overprescribing of antibiotics and the increasing incidence of antibiotic resistance, which seems to be generating a lot of panic, and it should, but does not seem to be generating a big enough shift fast enough in the way that we're handing out antibiotics. The Choosing Wisely campaign, an initiative designed to reduce unnecessary test drugs and procedures, also recommends against routine anal your analysis. And this difficulty in getting people to change their, their prescribing habits, getting health professionals to change anything for that matter, the Choosing Wisely campaign has been like the poster child for it because um, they, this particular group, it's, I think there are 80 medical societies and organizations involved in it. They've done some follow-up um, research studies to see if in response to publishing really clear data on a website, uh, each special practice specialty was asked to come up with a, a, you know, 10 things that could be done less or shouldn't be done at all. After all the public education and everything else, how's it going? And they found that the practices were increasing, not decreasing. So very difficult to get doctors to do something differently. Well, it seems that efforts to get doctors to not do the test have been about as ineffective as trying to get them to stop prescribing antibiotics when they're not warranted, which has led some hospitals to try different approaches, all right? Now, one is to not give doctors ordering your analysis the test results unless they make the extra effort of calling and asking for them. A 16-week study that included 646 specimens showed that prescriptions for patients who are asymptomatic dropped from 48% to 12% with this approach. And one of the things that the researchers noted is that they didn't have to retrain any, they didn't have to try to talk any doctors into doing anything different, um, and there weren't any safety issues associated with this. An emergency room in Toronto addressed the problem by using containers with a preservative that allowed for collection of specimens and they didn't have to be refrigerated for up to 48 hours. The specimens were only analyzed if the doctors specifically requested them and prescriptions for antibiotics went down by 50% as a result of instituting this practice. Now I'm going to give a few more suggestions for lowering the um, use of useless and harmless testing. And this is the message to you. Stop agreeing to it. Before any test is performed, you should ask a lot of questions. Why are we doing this? Um, why do you think that this is a good idea? This is particularly important if you are asymptomatic and in a healthy state. What the heck are we doing all these tests for? Another idea, stop visiting doctors when you aren't sick. The routine annual physical is the source of considerable harm due to this type of routine testing. The annual exam, this might shock you a little bit, but it's been determined to be useless for healthy people by the Canadian Task Force on Periodic Health Examination, the American College of Physicians, the American Medical Association, and the U.S. Preventive Medical Services Task Force. According to the U.S. Veterans Association, quote, comprehensive routine physical examinations are not recommended for the asymptomatic adult, although many patients and physicians continue to endorse the practice. A Cochrane review concluded, quote, general health checks did not reduce morbidity or mortality, neither overall nor for cardiovascular or cancer causes, although they increased the number of new diagnoses. In other words, you get a lot of positive tests, but you don't, in, you don't improve the outcome at all. According to Dr. Ezekiel Emanuel, one of the architects of the Affordable Care Act, bad habits are hard to break, no kidding. In a New York Times editorial, he wrote, quote, Annual exam persists because it is a habit and habits are hard to break and also because of stories. Most people know someone who claims to have been saved due to a minor abnormality detected early and treated successfully. But based on what we know about overdiagnosis and overtreatment, many of these stories are being told by people who were not really sick. This happens all the time with the mammography issue where there's always somebody who thinks that they were saved who had ductal carcinoma in situ which is not cancer. So you weren't saved from anything. You were subjected to fear and treatment and diagnosis of not cancer, 
um, in response to a test that probably shouldn't have been done, a screening test that shouldn't have done in the first place. So the bottom line is this. The current medical system, if you look at the architecture of it, it's designed to take healthy people and turn them into sick patients and to take the already sick patients like the ones in the nursing homes who are having your analysis and turn them into sicker patients. Healthy people should avoid interactions with doctors most of the time and unhealthy people should do two things. Be really cautious when considering things that are proposed by your healthcare providers and then really get committed to regaining your health so you can get yourself out of the medical mill and the risks associated with routine medical care and medical care of all types. I wanna make myself crystal clear here about this issue of hanging out with doctors. If I had a headache and it didn't go away for three or four weeks, I think I'd go check it out. If I had a splitting pain in my side and it seemed to be getting worse, no matter what I did, I think I would wanna know why I had that. So I'm not suggesting that you should not take, that you should not see doctors when you have symptoms. Um, what I am suggesting is when you're healthy, and particularly the older you get, if you start poking and prodding, you will usually find something that requires treatment, and the question is whether or not you benefit from it. What I've talked about today is a clear example of much of the time you do not benefit from knowing about it or doing something about it. That's the problem, all right? So, um, so if you have symptoms, see a doctor. If you don't, really think twice about why you're going. And the other thing is even when you have symptoms and see a doctor, make sure that you um, ask a lot of questions unless there's some kind of an emergency so that you don't just follow directions and find out later on it wasn't such a good idea. Um, I teach by analogy, as some of you know, so let me give you an example of what I think happens to healthy people in the sick care system we're in. I, have, I live in a house that's about 30 years old and I've taken pretty good care of it. I'm the only owner of the house that's ever lived there. Um, over the years, lots of things have had to be done, replace the roof, replace the HVAC, and all kinds of things like this. Uh, so I think it's in pretty good condition. I'm sure there's always something to do, but it's in pretty good condition. Now think what would happen if I put ads in the newspaper and I put something on Facebook, come to my house. If you're a contractor of any type, I don't care if you do drywall, basement, waterproofing, landscaping, whatever, and here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go through my house, which is pretty large, and the basement and the, and the wooded lot, the whole nine yards, and I want you to look for something that needs to be fixed. And then if you decide to fix it or I hire you to fix it, my homeowner's insurance will pay for it, okay? I'd be under construction until I'm 100 years old. And that's essentially what people are doing with their bodies. So the routine exam is the beginning of the problem because it leads to routine tests, which lead to things that you don't wanna know about, like you have bacteria in your urine and who cares, it doesn't matter in most cases. All right, that's all for today and all for the week as usual. Pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it and I will be back to you next week with more news.